Day three began early and loudly on Balanhinge, as local hosts, many of whom had fiesta throughout the night, got the rock band to start right where they had finished the night before. Combined with the strong coffee, the music had racers up and awake and ready for the technically challenging passage to Sambawan Island. Proximity between the two islands resulted in course organizers laying out several loops around neighboring islands to lengthen the day's distance to 33 nautical miles. Five, four, three, two, one, now! Day 3's course continued through the Samar Sea, taking the racers through a wide spectrum of different currents and wind directions, and a group of landmasses which affected both in a very unpredictable manner. Racers would pass by several large islands, including Marapipi, which towers over 3,000 feet above the ocean. Race teams, free to choose their course between gates, had different takes on the best way to use the wind to their advantage. Some teams found the winds closer to the island a bit stronger than those found in the open sea. This was due to the warming effect of the island causing a vacuum that channels the breezes. With strong winds powering crews through the course, teams arrived at Sambawan Island, a windswept string of rocks, with most of the afternoon to explore its rugged, uninhabited beauty. the best. I saw this in the website of Phil Hobie yeah. as one of the destinations and it is so much better of course. <laughs> but still no women. Sunrise on Sambawan found racers a bit worse for the wear, as the previous day's course had left a few reminders. I get lovely bruises all over. <laughs> Alright, that's going to be held for about half an hour. <laughs> so my first cap size. <laughs> Uh, I'm ready. I guess so. First cup size. While appearing on the charts, a fairly straightforward section of the course, day four was to be one of the most demanding legs of the challenge, owing to increased wind velocity and stronger swells. One casualty of the severe conditions was Team Steelberg and Fu, knocked out of the day's racing and their overall second place position by a broken mass experienced little more than a half hour off Sambala. As we dug the nose of the boat in and the boat stopped or slowed down quickly, the pressure on the sail just kept pushing the top of the mast forward and the center of the mast came back and snapped. So I, I knew the mast was snapped before we had actually capsized. Whether due to equipment failure or other reason, Inability to finish a leg entails severe penalties, usually strong enough to knock teams out of a contending position. 
Times for an unfinished leg are usually based on the last recorded finish time of the day, plus a 20% penalty. Other crews, while not suffering major equipment failure, were still having a tough time in the fierce conditions. Almost every team had at least one capsize, most having several even in the course of one leg. Capsizing in most cases does no harm to the boat, which with maneuvering can be righted again. But having the two crew members being thrown around like rag dolls around the rigging, sails and masts can leave racers a bit humbled. When you capsize you can't choose the place where you're going to land. So you hit the mast, you hit the wires. And you're, you're rushing to get it up again because yeah. it's a race. So yeah, there was one capsize. We, um, we did a pitch pole when, you, when the balls dig in first in front of the wave. I landed first, then she came down at me. Oh, it was pretty messy. Yeah. I think I got a big bruise here. At the gate off Malapasqua, the racers had moved along so rapidly that they almost outpaced the organizer's boat, who arrived only minutes before the lead boat. Organizers hurriedly threw buoys into the water, marking the gate. The finish of day four was one of the closest of the challenge. Race leaders Davies and Harris led until the last few miles when husband and wife team Tony Stearns and Janet McCullough, hailing from Saipan, managed to clinch victory for the day by little more than 20 seconds. Despite the challenging conditions, a treat awaited the weary mariners on the completion of the leg. Their final destination was Kalangaman Island, a tropical gem of white sands rising out of turquoise water. Meaning bird in Visayan, Kalangaman was the smallest of the islands visited on the race route and was hands down the favorite destination amongst racers. This yeah, island, island is in. unbelievable, you know, two sandbars and just so beautiful. I mean, I've seen so many islands, but this island is just one of the most beautiful I've ever seen. It gets better every, every day, you know. This is our fourth island, and this one tops it all. Just when you think they'd be collapsed on the beach, many of the racers went right back into the strong winds to play. Uh, the high point for me was the beach we spent the last night on. The one with the sand spit. That was a great island. Uh, there's a perfect sand spit that's perpendicular to the wind with a little lagoon or shallows on the one side with uh, very calm waters and the surf crashing on the upwind side and to sail a Hobie on a reach right up and over across that spit and off, going off the other side with a cray. <laughs> Just build up the speed and go right over it. Of course, they were doing that on the smaller one, and Tony really wanted to. In fact, I don't know if you noticed, we were the last boat to take our sails down. He kept them up because he was waiting for the tide to rise. <laughs> Throughout the race, racers were accompanied by a flotilla of support boats designed to provide maximum safety and logistics for the Hobie Cats. Crew were ferried from gate to gate, media and marshals to the different destination, and kilos and kilos of foods, tents, kitchen equipment, and personal gear were set up, used, and broken down every day. This intensive usage can wear down even the hardiest, and midway through the race, one of the logistics boats, the Skipjack, had problems with an oil pump that seemed serious enough to knock it out of commission. No, we're just putting fresh water in. It's just a lubricant he put in before. Luckily, a part was helicoptered out at last minute notice from Cebu, solving what would have been a huge headache for organizers. Another factor which defined the pleasurable experiences for the racers of the last three Hobie challenges has been the efforts of the catering crew. The catering crew worked tirelessly to make sure the mega calories the competitors burned during the day were replaced in the most mouth-watering fashion possible at night. 
Kalangaman marked their last dinner on the tour, and it was time to see who amongst the cooks earned the approval of head chef Red Augustine. DJ, soup, one point. Renato, rice, one point. DJ, two points for the pasta. Leanne, one point. Kiko, zero points. Ilongo, one point. Carol, one point. I have to say again, Kiko, zero points. Kiko, <laughs> Kiko.